Greetings, friends. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program. Here's a question. Who wants more faith? And the answer is, we all want more faith. Let's read about one man that wanted more faith in Mark chapter 9, verse 17. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, it throws him down, he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him, and he, he saw him, and when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell to the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him uh, both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. The boy's father cried out to the Lord for help in his unbelief. So he wanted more faith too. Then there's the apostles. They wanted more faith. Let's read about that in Luke 17, verses 5 through 10. And the apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. So the Lord said, If you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be pulled up by the roots, and be planted in the sea, and it would obey. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and sit down to eat. But will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper, and gird yourself, and serve me till I have eaten and drunk, and afterward you shall eat and drink? Does he thank that service because he did the things that were commanded to him? I think not. So likewise you, when you have done all these things that which are commanded of you, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what was our duty to do. Jesus did not directly increase the faith of the apostles. We are told in Ephesians 2.8 that by the grace of God, we all receive a certain amount of faith. We don't know if the amount of faith given to us is the same amount given to everyone, or if we all receive a different amount of faith based on the grace of the Father, some more, some less. But whatever amount of faith we were initially given, we all want more. Even the apostles wanted more. And based on the questions the apostles asked Jesus, we know that it is possible to get more. We just need to find out how. So let's take another look at Jesus' answer to the apostles concerning their request to increase their faith. Jesus uses a servant as an example. He tells the apostles that uh, the servant only does all that their master has commanded them to do is an unprofitable servant. Jesus didn't increase the apostles' faith directly, but he did give them a bit of a riddle that, when solved would lead the apostles to the answer that increases their faith. Now the apostles are the servants of the Father, and if all they do is, commit, is what is commanded of them, they too are unprofitable servants. What Jesus is telling them is that he is not going to increase their faith. Increased faith is the reward of those that do more than what is commanded of them. That leaves us with two questions. Uh, we need to answer these questions before we can learn how the apostles, and therefore we, can increase our faith. First, we need to know what was commanded of the apostles, and therefore what is commanded of us. Since we need to know how and what we can do, is, uh, that is more than what is commanded of us. So, what we need... I'll start that over. So, what is it that is commanded of us? We can start with the very same commandments Jesus gave Moses, 
which are the Ten Commandments. Certainly, the law that was commanded to Moses is also commanded to us. Let's read Jeremiah 31, verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We see at the end of verse 33 that whatever God, uh, whenever God makes the new commandment with us, God will put his laws in our hearts and in our minds. These laws are the same Ten Commandments that God gave Moses, only instead of stone, they're written on our hearts. Therefore, to do all that we are commanded is to obey the Ten Commandments. Now let's read some familiar verses that stress the need for doing all that we are commanded and its relationship to faith. James 2, verses 14 through 26. What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. What do you, uh, but, what, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works, and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. But you see then that a man is justified by works, and not by faith only. Likewise, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when we, she received the messengers and sent them out another way? For as the body without, spirit, uh, without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. By doing the works we are commanded to do, people will be able to see which faith we are of, which in this case would be the Christian faith. Once we are doing all that is commanded of us, what's our next step? What step do we take now that that will increase our faith? The answer is bear fruit. Let's take a look at some verses that identify good fruit that is in compliance with the Ten Commandments. This is Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. After we have done all that we are commanded, Jesus points us to the path that leads to increasing our faith. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, goodness, self-control. There is no law against bearing that type of fruit. So it's important for us, too, to also heed a warning that we have from Jesus for not bearing fruit. The following verses bring home the point of uh, only doing all that we are commanded and not going beyond that and bearing fruit. This is in Luke 13, verses 6 through 9. He also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and have found none. Cut it down. 
Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let alone this year also, until I dig around and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well. But if not, after that, you can cut it down. The man that had the fig tree is our Father in heaven. Jesus is the keeper of the vineyard. And we are the fig tree. The Father called us and planted us in his garden. And after three years, uh, patient years of tending his garden, we still bore no fruit. And the Father told Jesus to cut us down because we were just taking up space. Jesus asked the Father for one more year, during which he would again fertilize us. And if we still bore no fruit after a year, then he would cut us down. So God the Father called us, and we answered the call. We have done all that has been commanded us, yet we are still not bearing fruit. What can we do in order to avoid being cut down? What's our next step? Get fertilized. So how? For some basic suggestions, or perhaps reminders, talk to the Father every day in prayer. After all, He did call us. It's not necessary to spend hours a day in prayer when we first need a little fertilizer. A little bit every day will work. After talking to the Father, we can listen to His Son by reading the Bible. Again, this does not have to be a marathon session. A little bit every day will bear fruit and do wonders for growing our faith. Just pick a time and place that works best for you to talk to the Father in prayer and pick a place that works best for you to read the Bible and listen to the words of His Son. Suppose you're someone that's already praying to the Father and reading the Bible on a regular basis but you still want more faith. What can you do? In Matthew 5, starting in verse 21, Jesus tells us sin starts in the mind and in the heart. You can examine yourself and cut out the dead wood of murder, envy, and strife. Then prune back the branches of darkness and let the sun of righteousness shine in on all your leaves. For some specific For some specific ways to bear fruit within the continuing Church of God, on the spiritual side, you might consider some extra prayer time for the brethren that are sick and hungry. You might also consider fasting. And on the physical side of bearing fruit, you might consider trying your hand at narrating an audio book. We have one internet magazine dedicated to the English language and another one dedicated to all other languages. They both need audiobooks. You could also record a daily newsletter for those magazines. There are books, magazines, and newsletters that need proofreading. You could also look into various methods of marketing ebooks and audiobooks. If any of those meth- methods of bearing fruit work for you, let us know. All of the things I mentioned, we have uh, helped fulfill Matthew 24:14. After we have done all that we are commanded to do, and after we have fertilized the fig tree through prayer and Bible reading, and after we have cut off the dead branches of envy and strife, and after we have let the sun of righteousness shine in, then we will start to notice some little buds forming. And then the buds will flower into blooms. And the blooms will blossom and bear the fruit of faith. And then, if the need should ever arise, you will be able to say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. This is Steve Dupuy for the Bible News Prophecy Program.